Pride, tradition, excellence. We the people. We. The Washington Tattoo. Greetings, I'm Mark Riley, and welcome to the Washington Tattoo Podcast, where the world's musical traditions come to life. The Washington Tattoo is an international music and arts festival coming to the Washington, D.C. metro area. Our podcast explores the lives and stories of world-renowned musicians, dancers, producers, choreographers, artists, educators, arts advocates, and those who serve our cultural communities at large. For more information and donations, find us at www.thewashingtontattoo.com. Now, please enjoy this episode of the Washington Tattoo Podcast, sharing the power of the arts one story at a time. Hello, everyone, again, and welcome to this episode of the Washington Tattoo Podcast. As usual, I have my co host here, Jesse Seif. Jesse, how are you doing tonight? Good, Mark. Thanks again for having me on. It's good to be back. It's good to talk to you. Fantastic. I want to take a note that we are recording this episode, at least the intro for this episode, on the U.S. Marine Corps birthday. Oorah. That's correct. Oorah. It is, uh, <laughs> it is the 245th birthday of the Marine Corps today. That's incredible. I mean, their story is amazing. And I know you being a, uh, a Marine and everything else, like that's got to mean something pretty special to you. Yeah, it's it's really cool. And, you know, one of the the best traditions about the Marines is the Marine Corps birthday, because no matter where you are around the world, there is some type of celebration, whether that's, you know, an extravagant ball in D.C. or if that's in the field in, in some other country, just with some crackers and jam. Um, <laughs> so it, the ceremony uh, iterates itself everywhere and always on uh, the 10th of November. So it's, it's a really cool tradition. That's awesome. I know, I mean, army has all of its balls for its birthday and everything else, but like what kind of gigs, you know, typically happen for these, these events? I mean, is it typically just a ball? I mean, I know that there was some traveling today by the commandant's own, like what are some gigs that typically take place? Yeah. So, I mean, I can only speak on my experience in the commandant's own. So, uh, a lot of times we're we're the ones performing and, you know, uh, going to different events. Like, for example, uh, we have performed on an aircraft carrier and uh, on ships uh, that are docked in New York City um, for, for the birthday. So they have balls actually on the ship, uh, which is really fun. Then, of course, when we do banquet halls, we've gone to Philadelphia. There's some in D.C., just some of the places that we can kind of get to in a day or two uh, travel, but it's, it's a great time. There's uh, cake cutting with swords. <laughs> there are, you know, ceremonial uh, drill formations. Uh, there's a, there's a passing from the oldest Marine to the youngest Marine at the ball um, with, with the cake. So it's, it's a lot of really, really cool and historic stuff. Yeah, I love that. And of course, by the end of the night, those those events can get really exciting if you stay long enough. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You want to stick around for sure. <laughs> <They're fun. laughs> well, well, cool. And that, I mean, that leads us up to tomorrow. Tomorrow's Veterans Day, also uh, Remembrance Day for our friends over in the UK. And they have some incredible, you know, ceremonies and traditions with Remembrance Day for all the fallen um, and I think that leads us perfectly into this next episode with uh, Master Sergeant Retired Joshua Dukes uh, with the Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. I think in his former life earlier in the Army, he was a Patriot missile technician, uh, but also one of my, my close friends from going up in New York. So folks, thank you very much for tuning in again, and I hope you enjoy this episode of the Washington Tattoo Podcast. All right, greetings everybody. We have Josh Dukes on the line with us today. He's a world-renowned performer, All-Ireland guitar champion, recording artist, former drum major and drum group group leader for the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, Fife and Drum Corps, uh, sought-after Celtic musician, workshop and sessions facilitator, and man, just an inspiration for so many people. So Josh has performed and toured all over Europe and the United States, and he's a dear friend, incredible human being, and honestly, I love this guy. So Josh, uh, thank you so much for taking the time out today. Man, thanks for being here. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have to crush my head down to get through the door after that amazing, uh, uh, you know, intro. I mean, I, I'm literally, I'm floating in here now. You're going to have to bring me down. 
<laughs> awesome. So, I mean, you know me, I like all about inspiration and like trying to figure out like how that makes people tick. And I know that's something you're, you know, real big into as well. Like, so if you had a first big inspiration, who would that be and why? I think one of my first big inspirations with traditional music is going to be a, uh, actually a group called Lunasa. Um, and that group was uh, transformational in Irish music because it brought them, it brought Irish music into kind of the mainstream. And at the same time, it was still traditional. It wasn't like the, the, the usual like Irish band that goes and mixes rock music to it, right? It literally was traditional dance music. And it was cool. And they were touring around and going, going to different uh, uh, colleges and, and, and making it cool for everybody. Right? So this, this group, Lunasa, really influenced me into getting into Irish music. And it just, it, it really got me moving. Uh, one of, my, one of my, my good friends, Kevin Crawford, uh, he's flute player for Lunasa. And, uh, you know, that band literally is one of the most groundbreaking uh, bands around that really has moved a lot of people to the music. That's awesome. Um, I mean, you've been now a part of the Washington, Baltimore traditional scene for a whole bunch of years. So, I mean, how did you start kind of getting into that whole scene? <laughs> well, it's funny, man. Cause like, so we served together right in the old guard. And when I was in the old guard, uh, I got there and I was like, okay, you know, obviously I'm, I'm drumming and I'm doing all these different things, but I always needed another outlet. So, uh, I ran into uh, I ran into Dave Knoll, which we both know, who also served bass drummer, and he was playing this little ball on, right? Ticky 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 at the uh, at the at the front desk. In fact, I know I got one around here. Where is it? Look at this thing, right? So he's sitting at the front desk and he's playing it, and I'm like, dude, what is that? And he's like, it's a ball on. I'm like, I don't. How do you spell that? It was like B O D H. There was a D in there, Mark. There was a D in Bahrain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. So, so anyway, so he's playing this drum and, uh, and I'm like, so, so what is this? He's like, so it's a Bahrain. I'm like, okay, that's great. What do you do with it? And he's like, well, you know, I actually, I take this down to the pub down the street and I play music all night with my friends, drink a couple of beers and have a great time. And I was like, yo, you got to bring <laughs> me down there. Like that sounds amazing. Right? So, so he brings me down to this place called Nanny O'Brien's. Literally, Nanny O'Brien's was one of the most, um, it, it was kind of the titular head of Irish traditional music uh, for years, right? I had no idea. So he brings me down there, and I walk in, and there's all these great musicians playing. Um, Brendan Mulvihill, um, Brian Gaffney, who was the actual owner of the place. They're all in there playing music. I walk in, I mean just some of the most amazing melodies I've ever heard along with people hanging out, having a beer, having community together. And I literally was like, I'm home. <laughs> like, this is what I wanted. This is, this is awesome. Right. Coming from fly from drum music early in my career, I was like, this is community music at its best. And so I was like, yo, th this is me. I, I, I want to do this. And so that's how I got started. And it just, I mean, it just perpetuated from there. That's incredible. I, I remember going to some of those early sessions with uh, Joe Mon. We'd come out with us. We'd have all these folks that were hybriding between fifing and drumming, the right. Irish traditional scene. And, and I mean, it was, I remember those were exciting times, but I mean, I really, that first story for me was always one that I always had a lot of questions about of just, you know, what was that initial draw? And I think you're right. It's all about, it's about people. And I know that's really, you know, kind of down and deep. That's what you're all about. Um, right. So bridging into the next question, um, I kind of relate to you as kind of the godfather of crack or the crack. Um, and <laughs> so many ways right now. people are blown right now. <laughs> <laughs> right, but, <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I regard you as probably one of the best connectors uh, that's out there. And I mean, you're somebody who does bring the crack. You have a humble kind of confidence about you uh, that you bring to the table. And so, I mean, Number one, can you talk a little bit like what does crack mean and, and kind of were you always like that or is that something you felt like you grew into? Yeah, it's funny you ask. Uh, so we should probably tackle the, you know, the, the 800 pound grill in the room. We're talking about crack. So anybody that has no idea what that is, I know where your mind went, right? So, 
uh, you know, crack, C-R-A-I-C, uh, is kind of described as like, um, what's the vibe in here? What's the, you know, well, what's going on? Like, how are people jiving together? What's the crack? You know, like, what's the crack? What's going on? Uh, so, so as far as crack, I would say, it, I think it's always been inside me. I know, like, growing up, um, I, I, I always loved being around people. I always would rather accomplish a task together instead of by myself, just the way I'm wired. And then realizing that, uh, you know, one person's thoughts can be strong, but everybody's thoughts together, put together, molded, and then, you know, you come to a common ground, normally out, outperforms that one singularity uh, way of thinking, right? So uh, that's really the way that I, I think I was wired initially. And as I grew into it, uh, obviously being uh, in the military, uh, running the drum group, then getting out and then um, I put together a real estate team. I just, I feel like this is, this is, this was my calling is to, to put together, assemble teams, get people to work together uh, and just, you know, ac accomplish tasks and have a great time doing it, which I think that having a great time doing it is the most important part of it. Right. Cause like, if you don't like what you're doing, what are you doing? Like, who cares? Like if, if you hate it, if you, if it sucks, can I say that? If it sucks, <laughs> like, like then like well, what are you doing here what are we doing so that 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 was always that was always the premise for me uh, that's awesome and i think that's that's really gold i mean that's that deep down core why right why are we doing what we do right so um there are tons of festivals kind of all around the world that are these traditional festivals and there's definitely some in the dc area there's a lot on the east coast i'm sure there are, there are tons all across the country but um would you what are some that you would recommend what are some 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 festivals people should check out um they should definitely check out the catskills irish arts week that's up in catskill new york and that is one of the largest irish music um, festivals uh, that you can go to in America. Uh, and and it, it has, I mean, every type of traditional instrument you could possibly think of, whether it's Shano singing or Shano's dancing or Irish flute, the Balram, which you had up there before, remember this guy, right? Um, I mean, it, it's got everything you possibly could think of and it has world renowned instructors, not just from the United States, but also from Ireland and Scotland as well. Uh, so that's a great one. Uh, that, 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 when is that? That's in July. Um, another one is the Mad Week, um, which is in Silver Spring every year. That is for, you know, kids and adults alike. And that is more of a local scene thing around here that many of us go to. Uh, but again, they bring in great instructors from uh, Ireland, from, you know, the West Coast, East Coast, from everywhere around. So those, those two workshops slash uh, week festivals are amazing and, and it, they don't disappoint. Awesome. So um, as an instructor slash performer, uh, do you have a greatest musical memory? Uh, yeah, I would say, I mean, I, you know, like, like all of us, like we have so many, right? And, you know, as the brain gets older, you only remember the closest one to like the last one that you did, you know? <laughs> uh, so I was really thinking about this one. But I would say, you know, outside of my old guard experience, I definitely would have a tour that I took to Germany uh, with a, a, an assembled group that was specifically put together just for us traveling to Germany to bring traditional music uh, to Germany and Switzerland. And um, I think the, the, the best thing about that trip was that each night we hopped to another location. And it was like each, each venue was a, like a concert hall, but at the same time was like a beer house at the same, you know, like together. Right. So literally we could sit on stage and there'd be like, you know, three or 400 people seated. And then there was a bar in the back and it was just the, the whole setup, every place we went to was set up that way. It was ingenious. And I don't know why we don't have more of those in the States, but, um, but it, it was such a great experience because literally 
you know, like when you watch a documentary of like bands traveling around, they're all jammed into this nasty van that, you know, like four people are sleeping in the back with their feet up and like somebody's driving, somebody's doing a crossword puzzle, somebody's laying on somebody over here, you know. We did that for like two weeks and and it was a lot of fun. There was a lot of, again, community, a lot of relationships formed uh, and a lot of music, uh, you know, back and forth because like we were a traditional band they had another band uh that was more of like a rock irish band and then we had we had traditional dancers it was just this huge you know mixture and conglomerate of ideas different musicians but you know we were there for the same reason so that that's easily one of my most favorite and uh memorable experiences I mean, that's amazing. So you start thinking about Celtic music and, you know, maybe a lot of people don't, you know, put Celtic music, Switzerland and Germany kind of all together. But I think there is a pretty decent um, following or at least a fan base in Germany and Switzerland for Celtic music. Is that correct? Oh, it's huge. It, it, there, there, there's a huge following. Um, we, we were we were floored. I mean, Germans are all about Irish music and it, it, it's it's everywhere. And everybody is like into it, listening. It's not, you know, like in America, like you'll have like a third of the audience like over there talking, doing their own thing. Like in Germany, like the rules are you listen when people are playing. And it literally, it was like start quiet in there. And as soon as we would stop playing, I mean, an eruption of, 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 of just applause. I mean, it, it was just, it was so different from our two cultures. However, you could definitely tell they love it just as much as we do. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I think that's also too, when you think about German and Swiss, you know, technology and you think about focus I and mean, it's very, it's very much a structured system and you can see that in there, right? Yep. So yeah, when you, you take the structure and you take the alcohol and uh, put that all together. I'm sure hey, it's, it's, it's been the best of both worlds. It's the meeting of the minds. <laughs> all right. Well, cool. So, I mean, the next one here too is, I mean, you're super busy all the time. You definitely, you have a real estate uh, business in the DC area. You're still super active in the music scene as well. I mean, what are some things to keep your batteries charged or keep you inspired? What are, what are some, some things that you do to stay maybe growing? Um, so that, that's, that's a great question couple different things. Uh, first off, number one, uh, I teach, right? Like I, it, it, it keeps, it keeps me sharp, right? Um, what is it? Stephen Covey talks about sharpening the saw. We've been talking about it for years, right, Mark? Mm -hmm. um, and so that helping you, you're like, when you have to teach something, it makes you get your mind right, right? You have to get your mind right so you can get somebody else's mind right. And so, so that's that old. keeps me, you know, like it, 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 that keeps me energized. It keeps me refreshed. It also puts responsibility on me. Like I'm going to pass this down to somebody. Right. So that, again, that goes back to why, like, I feel like it's my responsibility to pass this down to somebody. And so that regenerates me. It rejuvenates me. It gets me excited uh, and, and keeps me going, you know, so th that's definitely one thing. I'd say another thing is uh, exploring other um, other genres, other, other you know, obviously like so. So I'm a black guy. I play Irish music. Okay, go find me ten of those. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're not going to find too many, right? Like, and so that's just I, I love reaching across the aisle. I love like figuring out different things. I also play fife and drum music again, like you know, across the aisle. I love. Uh, I played in jazz band. I played uh, in a in a Latin band for a while. Uh, I, I I've kind of done it all. Or orchestra music. I played it oboe. Mark, I played the oboe. Oboe. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. No I, you diss know, on I, any of you players listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, please, the oboe. It's not. It's not an easy. You think that's easy? You you got something coming to you. Okay. Double read. Mm -mm, no. <laughs> so um <laughs> but but that that's what rejuvenates me i think it's not me me the person it's the people and the the other things that i bring into my life that help rejuvenate me if i get stuck um you know like everybody gets bored right like i'm you've been playing you've been a percussionist for how long over 30 years yeah yeah like oh my god we're old man <laughs> anyway um but yeah like 30 years right 
like luckily in percussion you have all these like different pieces of percussion right i mean it, really being a percussionist is the ultimate adhd uh uh you know like fix right sure. it's like oh i'm a percussionist i play all these different things but you know for the for me like that's kind of my percussionist look at things I, i'm like you know i'm trying this i'm trying that it just keeps me keeps me moving keeps me interested it's always a challenge and 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 i think i would just you know i would be so bored without without constantly pushing myself to 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 pull other things into my life so that that's what keeps me going uh, i love it that's a great response i mean I think to me, one of the greatest things is your story. I mean, you have an incredible story of exactly what you said, being able to reach across different genres, across different, you know, stereotypes. And I mean, I remember so many stories about when you first started going over to Ireland. And I mean, you just, you said it, like, find me 10 of those guys. <laughs> right, 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 so. exactly. No, and I mean, I think that's what I think is in the next part of it is that you've recognized your story and now you're saying, well, I'm a teacher. It's kind of my responsibility to be on my A game to pass down the knowledge that you've gotten. And I think, you know, that's into the next uh, question leads really, it leads really well is that, I mean, you are really into wisdom and, you know, keeping people fresh and reading a lot and, and finding new ways to explain maybe, you know, some, some old concepts, maybe some new concepts, but um, are there, are there any types of books or phrases or wisdom that you could share with folks if they ever start feeling like they're in that season of getting stuck or starting to get stuck? Yeah. Um, so, so like I said before, like I, I started a real estate team, um, you know, I work with Keller Williams and, you know, like not to take a right hand turn, but I'm going to bring this back so that it all makes sense. Right. Um, Keller Williams is a huge, huge, huge proponent of training and, um, uh, development. Right. And so they have this thing called business objective life by design. It's a course, right? So I've taken this nine times, nine times in a row. Every year it comes around, I just take it again. I just take it again. I just take it again, right? I'm not the smartest man. And so a lot of things go over my head. Okay. So I got to take it over and over, but from taking it over and over and over, I've really internalized a lot of these things. And they have these things called bold laws, business objective, business objective life by design, but these bold laws and and these laws show up in your life everywhere and i feel like they're very they're very pertinent to being successful and also uh continuing uh yourself moving forward and so one of these things that one of these things that uh, uh i'd love to bring up is a phrase called no pressure no diamonds right no pressure no diamonds mm. like Everybody wants to wear jewelry. Everybody wants to wear bling. Everybody wants to look good, but they're not willing to put the, the time, the effort, the hurt that has to come along with that while you're making that dime, the pressure that you need to put down to make that shiny object at the end. And so no pressure, no diamonds keeps me on track of like, when I think things are tough, when I think things are, you know, ridiculously overkill, when I think things are stacked against me, I'm like, okay, well, this is the pressure point so I can get to that diamond. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I carry that along with me whenever I'm doing anything. If I'm working on phrases in music and I'm like, I'm just not a good enough musician to get this. I'm just going to forget about it. Like, dude, no, no, no pressure, no diamonds, man. Stand up. Like, like, let's do this. When, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working on a recording and it sounds horrible. <laughs> you know, you're like, this, this sounds horrible. Well, that's the pressure point to get to that diamond, right? So I love no pressure, no diamonds. Um, another one that I really, really, really like uh, is what you focus on expands. What you focus on expands. And it, it's, it's, very, it's very simple, right? Yeah, okay, fine. Like I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna focus on learning how to brew coffee. Okay, you, you get better and you get better at it, you get better at it. But so many people, especially these days, just want the quick fix, right? The, I'm just gonna start this and by next week, this is gonna be awesome, right? Mm -hmm. And so what you focus on expands, just keeps you focused on the things that matter. And 
I, I promise you, and I, I know you know this, it's like, if you just focus on one thing, it's amazing how quickly it'll just build. Even if, even if you just put it out there in your mind, mm. it's like, I'm going to walk seven days a week, right? It's like, if you just focus on that one little thing, you throw it out there, it immediately starts getting that perpetual motion going. So that's another one, no pressure, no diamonds, what you focus on expands. And then the last one I'll say is that, um, people grow into the conversations uh, that you put them in, right? So it's, you have to have the conversations to get things going, right? If you want to grow and, and, and have people learn and mature and push forward to goals, you have to start them a level higher, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to talk about tying your shoes. If you, if, it's like, let's talk about tying your shoes. Let's talk about tying your shoes. Let's talk about tying your shoes. Well, guess what? That person ties their shoes really well. However, however, you really want them to be able to dress themselves nicely and to understand why they're doing it, right? So you want to start that conversation a little bit above so that they're constantly reaching up instead of always meeting them where they're at. You know what I mean? So, so I, I, I love that, that phrase as well. This is all fantastic information. And I mean, we're talking about all of this time right now. And it's, you know, there are things, there are crazy things going on in the world. There are always crazy things going on in the world. Maybe it's a little bit more crazy now than ever before. But the idea is really figuring out that connective tissue. And I always love it. There's a, a great comment and a meme that's out there from the, the Peaky Blinders show. And it's got a picture of the guys all kind of walking up. And the phrase underneath it says, you know, surround yourself with people that force you to level up. And... Right. Man, I, you, you've been like that for me in my life. And, you know, I, I am always one of those people who try to look for someone who's going to help me level up because that's how we make, yeah, you know, it makes me better. It makes the people around me better. It makes, you know, the world a better place. So, yeah, I think you're spot on with all of that. Well, and I think we've been that for each other, right? Throughout the years, if anything, I mean, how many times did you beat me like uh, on solos? I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you know what I, I ended up becoming a better drummer for that right you started before me and I was always like at your at your heels I'm like oh, I gotta get this guy I gotta get this guy right so it's the same thing it's that great symbiotic uh relationship where it's like you know, we're boys we're friends uh we've known each other forever and at the same time we're also like we're professional boys we're professional um uh you, you know um hombres if you will you know what I mean like we 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 have helped each other in so many different ways without even talking about it. Well, and I think that whole idea is no pressure, no diamonds. Like I can literally go almost chapter per chapter in your and I's relational story and say, Oh, I remember that point, man, that was tough. Hey, I remember that one. That was tough too. And then it's like, you look at what that process has done. And I mean, I think you really encapsulated a great comment with that. And, and, that's something I'll, even from this interview, I'm going to remind myself of that. So thank you for that, that gift. Well, I appreciate it. I'm just passing it along, man. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So um, we're going to wrap up with the last couple questions here. Um, so I love this question. If the current you could tell the 20 year old version of yourself, what would you say to yourself? Just do something. Just do something. People literally will sit and rot and not do anything. If you want to do, if you want to get somewhere, you want to do something, you want to be a better musician, just do something. You got to start somewhere, stop thinking about it and do it. Like that mm -hmm. literally. And, and again, I'm talking about these very low level things here. It's like, I mean, it's like, they're very obvious things, but some of the most obvious things are not so obvious. And just getting started somewhere and not falling into the mind trap of I have to get ready 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 or aim 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 you know aim 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 I mean that that gets you that gets you that gets you nowhere so being if I could just tell myself one thing it's like literally just do something don't be don't be so you know tight hold on the outcome because there will be no outcome if you never get going. And I think that was one thing that I had to learn. And mm -hmm. if I had started that sooner, um, who knows where I'd be right now? So yeah, that's what I would say. Uh, I love it. That's I mean, spot on as well. I mean, there's so many people there that wish they could do something and it's always take that first step. 
and doesn't need to be perfect. And no first step is ever perfect. It won't be. Mm -hmm. You might even break your leg. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You won't, you won't step that way again. You won't. You won't. And that that's that's forward progress, right? Mm -hmm. I you know we have this thing we talk about like you got to fail forward. Like you you either you either um, you either learn or you win it's one or the other you win or you learn it's like mm -hmm. i won great i won great i didn't win this time but i learned yeah it's one or the other right uh, or, or if it's not you learn then you need to take an inward look <laughs> at like <laughs> yeah. why aren't you learning right right so just looking at it that way fail forward fail forward fail forward I love it. All right. So last question here. Um, you know, do you have anything personally or professionally coming up that we should be on the lookout for? Well, funny. Thank you, Mr. Coronavirus. Uh, you know, it, it has definitely put a, 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 a crimp and a cramp in our style, if you will, uh, for, you know, a lot of live music. However, um, I am going to be, I'm going to be teaching at this, this mad for trad week coming up and that'll be virtual. Um, and you know, you can definitely take a look, look that up online. Um, but that, that'll pop up. So, so that's going to be happening. Other than that, normally I'm on this great cruise every year called, um, Joni Madden's folking Irish cruise. That is folk, folk. Okay. <laughs> folking Irish cruise. Uh, and it's, it's amazing. It, it brings together about 80 musicians onto a ship. We set, we set sail somewhere. This year was supposed to be in the Mediterranean. <laughs> supposed to be in the Mediterranean. Um, and so th that, that, that's a great thing. Unfortunately, we're not doing it this year. However, you know, we're, we're getting things together to make sure that we can execute that uh, next year. Uh, so yeah, I think those are kind of the two things uh, that I've got going on. Normally I have lots of sessions. You can normally come and see me down in Alexandria, Old Town Alexandria at O'Connell's Pub twice a week on Mondays and also on Wednesdays from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. We play an Irish music session, traditional, uh, no amplification, literally just a bunch of people jammed in a corner, playing music, drinking Guinness, but you know, that's not six feet apart. So uh, right now, you know, we're, we're dealing with that and we, we haven't been able to get back, but that's another thing um, that, you know, once all this stuff works itself out, I'll be down there twice a week. And I, I would love for somebody to come in for a pint and a tune. That's awesome. So I have to say, Josh, thank you so much for your service, honestly, to our nation and your community. And thank you for uh, continuing to be an incredible example for so many other people out there. Uh, it's an honor for to have you on here. It's an honor to have you as a friend. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time today. Mark, man, thanks for having me. Love you, man. You're my boy from way back when. And I appreciate you having me. I can't wait to get together for a pint soon. Sounds good. All right. If anyone wants to find out any more information on Josh Dukes, you can find him on Apple Music, Spotify, and YouTube as well. And I'm sure if you uh, dig up some stuff about real estate, you're going to find him there as well. So Josh, again, thank you, my friend. Thanks, brother. Hello again, everyone. I hope you're enjoying this episode of the Washington Tattoo Podcast. We'd like to take a second to thank a new special supporter of this tattoo podcast project, Tap Space Publishing. They are offering Washington Tattoo Podcast listeners a 10% discount code on their entire purchase. So if you type in the discount code WA-TATTOO in all capitals, you'll receive 10% off your entire purchase until December 31st of 2020. Again, in all capitals, that discount code is wa T-T. OO. And again, thank you so much to Jim Casella and Murray Gusick for your support of our project. Greetings again, everyone. We just wanted to take a second to say thank you to Seif Studios for their creative media. If you want to find out more about Seif Studios, look them up on www.seifstudios.com. We'd also like to say thank you to our educational partner, ProLogic's Percussion, American Made Drum Pads. They're doing a special discount code for our listeners today. So if you go to www.prologicspercussion.com and type in TWT20, you will receive 20% off your entire order. So 
Thank you very much for tuning in today and please check out our supporters.